Hey, SecoHD here, and Windows 11 brings over a load of new changes, including a new refresh design and overall improvements. So I figured, why not check it out right now since the entire preview build has been released. But the problem is, I didn't meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11, and this is because I have an older machine and I do not have a TPM chip, which you do currently need. But I was able to work around this, and I'll leave a link in the description of exactly how I did that. Now, I'm a long-time macOS user, and this is only because my current workflow is to edit on Final Cut Pro and create motion graphics and transitions in Apple Motion. So I took a few weeks to move over to Windows 11, record, and then bring it back to macOS to finish editing. So in this video, I'll be going over my experience, the pros and the cons, and the features, and maybe if I should go back to Windows 11 permanently. So here is my review. Straight off the bat, the changes are right up front and center with the center dock as Windows 11 is apparently, and should be according to Microsoft, the center of your ecosystem. Now in its default position, which you can move back over to the left in settings, is okay, but I don't actually mind it being in the center, which I have gotten used to right now. And the dock actually felt very similar to Mac OS with the dock being in the middle. And finally, that the start menu has a different look, ditching the whole Microsoft Lumia type of design. I forgot what the OS is called but with this nice clean and glossy look and with apps on the top half and recommendations for documents on the bottom half that you might want to go back to or you've just literally recently opened. Now I've recently started to use multiple desktops because now you can actually customize each one. So I have the desktop currently running scripting, gaming and editing. But if you look at the backgrounds of each desktop, you can see that I can change each one of them to my liking and rename the desktops to whatever I like which you wasn't able to do in Windows 10 previously before. So there was widgets on macOS and now there's widgets on Windows. Now I believe there was widgets back on Windows Vista or Windows 7. So, well now when you click the widgets button, you can see widgets on things like weather, stocks, to do, photos and sports, for example. And you can add more to the page, but you're not able to move them outside of the widget shades. I mean, you can't do that on macOS either, but I thought you could probably do that. Now something that doesn't make sense and is much of a con in my experience is widgets on macOS live with your notifications. So when you click the top right, you would see your notifications and widgets sliding from the right. But on Windows, I found myself clicking the widgets button about once or twice just because I needed to see what the feature was like. So what I'm trying to ask is, would you find yourself automatically clicking the widgets button for the feature or wanted them to be somewhere else at a glance. Now I do love Windows snapping and it's always been in Windows and it's still great till this day. So the way that Microsoft has done this now is, so if you hover over the maximize button, you get the options of the most common snap layouts in Microsoft's opinion. Now I'm guessing they probably have some sort of data on this gathered from other users. But let's say for example, I wanna open up three windows side by side because I have an ultra wide monitor. I've got to do it by hovering over the maximize button and selecting where I want the windows to be placed. Once you set up your first snap layout on the first window, there'll be suggestions on where other windows should be placed based on your first snap suggestion. And the neat thing about this is if I had another monitor plugged in and set up my snap layouts and then decided for some reason to disconnect that monitor, windows will minimize those windows and in addition, remember the layouts that I had them in unless I move them of course, so that the next time I want to plug back in that monitor, they all open up exactly how I left them. That's pretty cold. The Microsoft Store, well, the inside the preview of that store is exactly what it should be and look like. This was one of the biggest things, apart from the Windows 11 announcement, that I wanted to check out. Windows keeping to the rounded corners and glossy design, the store has had a massive design overhaul. Just look at how the store looked like before and how it looks like now. You've got the highlights of apps either on deals or newly released on the home screen. You've got the apps, gaming and entertainment categories on the left hand side as well. Now, the thing is, I've always seen the Microsoft Store to be something that wasn't used unless you had to use it for a specific app such as iTunes or even the Amazon App Store where no one uses it unless you have or own a Kindle. But now the Microsoft Store actually scratched that. The headline should be Android apps can now run seamlessly on Windows 11. Well, not right now because things are in beta. So I couldn't test this out. The way this should work once it is out is that the Amazon Store will be merged into the Microsoft Store on Windows 11. Now, when you want to download an app, 
the Microsoft Store will pull that from the Amazon Store install them and run them through Intel Bridge technology. Now the thing is I don't know what this means for AMD users because the technology to run these apps is literally called Intel Bridge but maybe we'll know later on. Now before I forget Windows 11 in its current state animations icons and all these subtle changes are extremely smooth. The Microsoft Store has a new download progress bar which is different. Just previewing an app in the store is different and animations when opening and closing apps snapping windows are different. If you take a quick look at the Windows icon on the taskbar, it has its own little animation. So it does search the desktop app, widgets, opening and closing app, even in the action center when toggling a button or when a Bluetooth device is connected. They are such little changes, but when you've noticed these, they are quite nice coming from Mac OS. In Windows 11, even the settings app gets a massive glassy rounded corner redesign, making it even easier to use than before. All the pages are now on the left side, including system, Bluetooth, network, personalization, apps, accounts, time, gaming, accessibility, privacy and security, and finally, Windows updates. Now, all of these pages are simply modern and up to date, which I haven't seen a big change in macOS for quite a long time. Maybe except for Monterey. All right, so there's a new meet button in the middle of the dock, which is literally Microsoft Teams, now integrated right into Windows. So the whole point of this is to try and get, I guess, people to use the feature like it's FaceTime, Zoom, or even Skype. Now, it is a great idea. I've always seen Microsoft Teams to be used by the likes of businesses, schools, or even just organizations in general, and not really for family, which they did push a lot during the event. So maybe once Windows 11 is out there, people may be able to use it and well, we'll see how it goes from there. So there are some really great features in Windows and I really love the overall redesign. But will I be booting into Windows 11 or Mac OS Big Sur again? Windows 11. But I'll only be using Mac OS only for Final Cut Pro until I see the need to use Premiere Pro again. But thank you guys for watching this video and leave a comment down below if you'll be moving or upgrading to Windows 11 once it is released to the public and why. It'll be interesting to find out. Make sure to like and subscribe below. Until the next one.